G'day, it's AuthorNZ. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I want to do a follow-up video on um, on my Smith & Wesson Fail to Fire video. Um, I want to do a video on how to decock these things so that you don't need to dry fire them. Um, it's my belief that dry firing a 22 room fire is a bad idea. So um, what I'm going to do is pull this apart and I'm going to show you why. Why I think it's a bad idea, what happens to them, what causes the damage, and um, how to decock them without dropping the hammer. Alright, so I'm going to turn the video around, do this on the bench, I'll strip this down and I'm going to show you what happens to the firing pin when you do dry fire them, alright? Rightio, so this is the Smith uh, pulled down, and you can still see on my one that there is still a little bit of a mark there. I'll see if I can get this angle quite right. You can just see there's a little bit of a mark there and that's made by the firing pin. Now what happens is the when the firing pin hits here it pushes the chamber down this way so it, it deforms the shape of the chamber right. So your 22 round should just drop in like that and it should drop out pretty easily. If it doesn't do that you're going to have problems with loading. It won't load properly then the firing pin ends up pushing the round right into the chamber. It doesn't stamp the round as it should do, right? So, like you can see, when you push the firing pin, it travels quite a long way. It's got quite a lot of um, quite a lot of movement there. It's quite free floating, so it can come out of the end of the bolt quite a long way. Um, I believe that dry firing these is, is pretty bad. I believe the Browning buck marks are the same. Um, I think the Rugers have a firing pin block, so it's probably not as important. But I'll put this back together, and I'm going to show you how I decock it, so that you don't need to drop the hammer on an empty chamber. Okay, now we're back together. Um, remember that these obviously have a, a magazine disconnect, so you've got to have your mag in to pull the trigger, right? So what I've been doing, and I know I did demonstrate this on, on the other video, but it wasn't all that clear, so I'm just trying to get a better... Um, better demonstration, better camera angle. The best way to do it is with the slide forward. Right, so the other thing I don't do with these, I don't drop the slide on an empty chamber. Um, I don't know whether it damages it, but I'm just not going to do it. So I let the slide forward. When you get there, you can feel that the trigger is set. So I take up the slack in the trigger, and then all you need to do is just pull that slide back a touch, probably a quarter of an inch, pull the trigger, and then let the slide go right forward while you hold the pressure on the trigger. Let the trigger go, and that's decocked. Okay, so I'll do it again. Let the slide go forward first. Find that that position where the trigger's set. Slide back a bit. Pull the trigger. Let the slide go forward with your finger on the trigger, and that's decocked. Okay, hope that helps. Don't dry fire these. It is really bad for them. Um, and I believe that's the case with pretty much all rimfire, with all um, 22s. Alright, so I hope that was helpful. This is AuthorNZ. Thanks for checking out my channel. Catch you later.